So yeah, thanks thanks everyone for having me. Thanks Katie and Don and uh, Neil for having me today. Uh, so my name is Jin Sung Kim. I'm the Developer Relations Manager uh, on the Quantum Computing Team at NVIDIA. Uh, formerly Research Scientist at IBM Quantum. So nice to see a couple of familiar faces on this call today. So I want to talk about the, a couple of things that we've been working on at NVIDIA uh, to enable um, uh, the acceleration of quantum circuit simulation on GPUs. So uh, the two main thrusts that uh, we've been working on today are quantum circuit simulation. This is our KuQuantum SDK, which uh, a couple of the previous speakers uh, showed a few benchmarks from. I think there's some uh, really nice work from uh, Xanadu earlier in the day that was presented. Uh, and so KuQuantum is our uh, SDK for accelerating quantum circuit simulation on NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, and the other thing that we'll also talk about today, uh, we'll have a quick presentation by Zohim Chandani uh, on on Coda. Coda is our uh, platform for hybrid quantum classical computation. Uh, and so this enables uh, the domain scientists to flexibly integrate quantum resources, whether uh, emulated or uh, actual, into uh, a performant workflow uh, within a single stream uh, C environment uh, with Python bindings coming in the future. <clears throat> So let me start uh, by talking about KuQuantum. Uh, KuQuantum is deployed on Perlmutter now. Uh, we actually have a really nice uh, a container that Neil uh, very uh, helpfully deployed. Uh, and the way to think about uh, KuQuantum is that it kind of sits below this layer of the quantum circuit simulator. So imagine that one is uh, programming some sort of quantum computing application. Uh, you have your quantum uh, computing framework of choice, uh, whether it be CERC or Qiskit or Penny Lane or uh, a variety of others. Uh, and each one of these has their own associated quantum circuit simulator, for example, Qiskit Air or Circ QSIM. So KuQuantum sits in the layer beneath the, the quantum circuit simulator and uh, contains two libraries, QStateFec and QTensorNet. And these libraries allow you to accelerate your computations on a GPU accelerated backend. So uh, we have some really, really nice benchmarks showing um, some significant speedups uh, of a quantum circuit simulation compared to a single CPU. So let's dive into uh, the two leading quantum circuit simulation approaches today. So the first one is the state vector uh, simulation method, which I'm sure everyone here on this call is uh, familiar with. So this is a, uh, you know the gate-based emulation of quantum computer where you maintain the full two to the n vector state in memory. And every time you apply a quantum gate, you update uh, the, the state vector in time. Uh, this is a very powerful technique for simulating quantum circuits, as I'm sure everyone here knows. Uh, you can simulate very deep circuits, very entangled circuits, but there is a kind of hard memory uh, trade-off in that every time you add a qubit, you double the required memory uh, required uh, to simulate your system. So there is a kind of a practical limit of about 50 qubits even on a supercomputer uh, that you can simulate. Uh, there is also a complementary technique based off of tensor network methods. And the way to think about this is you, you only simulate the states that you need. So by uh, uh, optimizing, the, the path that you uh, contract your tensor network over, you can actually dramatically re reduce the memory footprint that's required uh, in your workflow. So by using uh, an optimal uh, path contraction, uh, you can actually simulate hundreds or even thousands of qubits uh, for many practical, uh, uh, many practical quantum circuits. So just to kind of illustrate uh, the phase space that these two kind of complementary techniques occupy uh, in uh, uh, this kind of qubits versus circuit depth um, diagram. Uh, for the state vector, you can you know, obviously simulate uh, maybe a few tens of qubits up to something uh, of the order of 50, but you can do very deep circuits. And on the other hand, you can do tensor uh, networks uh, simulation, which allows you to do uh, <clears throat> hundreds or even thousands of uh, qubits uh, at the expense of your circuit depth. And so in relation to current QPUs, Q current QPUs today occupy kind of this uh, lower left region of uh, this diagram, but in the future, we expect them to be able to explore uh, this unknown and unsimulatable space of this phase space. So let me talk about the DGX Crew Quantum Appliance. This is our container uh, that uh, is currently deployed on Perlmutter. So it's currently integrated with Circ as a front end. Uh, and it actually supports multi-GPU uh, uh, capabilities. So in our initial release of the DGX Quantum Appliance back in June, uh, we had some really nice benchmarks showing uh, almost 100x speed up uh, on a couple of different uh, uh, quantum 
algorithms of interest and uh, showed some really nice strong scaling measurements here. So up to eight GPUs, uh, getting almost a, a 90x increase in speed. Since then, uh, we've actually put out a couple of uh, performance optimizations uh, solely in software. So um, in our most recent release, uh, we're getting almost a 300x increase in performance uh, for uh, the Quantum Fourier transform for 32 qubits. This is using all eight GPUs in a DGX A100 box. So really, really nice, uh, strong scaling and really nice performance uh, benchmarks overall. Uh, what I want to say uh, about uh, the container coming out in the future is, uh, so we have a container that is slated to be released uh, around next month, uh, quarter four. And in this next release, we'll actually support Qiskit integration with uh, multi-node and multi-GPU support. So we have some initial benchmarks of our multi-node performance. Uh, we're simulating up to 40 qubits um, on, uh, on DGX uh, A100 nodes. Uh, this is on 256 GPUs, and we're showing, uh, you know, Pretty nice uh, weak scaling uh, measurements here. The execution time is remains under a minute. And we're also showing some really nice strong scaling uh, measurements for 32 qubits. Uh, this is for 256 GPUs. Uh, again, these are for quantum volume, QAOA, and quantum phase estimation. So really nice performance benchmarks uh, supporting multi-node. And what we also want to show is uh, kind of this record-breaking uh, performance for simulating uh, a quantum volume circuit of depth 10, uh, about three and a half times faster than a 64-node CPU cluster uh, just on two DGX A100s. Yeah. So these are all uh, benchmarks for Kustavec. For QTensorNet, um, I mentioned before, if you do some optimizations up front and uh, find the optimal contraction path, you can actually dramatically save on uh, the computation, uh, uh, the cost of your computation in terms of memory and performance. So there's two things uh, that we like to characterize uh, tensor networks with. Uh, one is the quality of the path. This is the, the total contraction cost and the, the time to find this optimal contraction path or uh, the path finding. So in comparison to some of the uh, kind of state-of-the-art packages uh, that exist out there, uh, Comparing to OpdineSum and Kutengra, uh, Kutensornet is actually several orders of magnitude better than OpdineSum, and about 20-30% better than Kutengra in terms of the total contraction cost. In terms the, of the time to find a contraction path, um, we're about an order of magnitude better than Kutengra. So really, really nice uh, metrics for our tensor network performance. And I just want to point out one really nice demonstration that uh, we, we like to show. This, uh, some of our colleagues at NVIDIA Research developed a novel quant uh, variational quantum algorithm uh, and used it to attack this uh, max cut problem with a known solution. So uh, we were actually able to scale this up onto 20 nodes of our Selene supercomputer. Uh, and we were actually able to solve a 10,000 vertex problem, which corresponded to a 5,000 qubit uh, simulation with 93% uh, accuracy. So, Really nice results and still uh, room to uh, uh, improve this performance even better since we only use 20 nodes. <clears throat> uh, in terms of our ecosystem, we, uh, we're partnerly, partnering broadly across the ecosystem. So uh, we, uh, we aim to partner with everyone uh, and all uh, uh, simulators within uh, the ecosystem. So uh, we have a variety of uh, uh, industrial partners. Uh, we're partnering with all sorts of quantum startups. Uh, we have integrations with, you know, all the major uh, quantum uh, computing frameworks, as well as uh, a lot of uh, HPC centers. Uh, yeah, so in summary, uh, KuQuantum is available today. We support state vector and tensor network methods. Uh, we can simulate noisy or perfect qubits, and we're integrated in all major quantum circuit simulation frameworks. Uh, the DGX KuQuantum appliance is available on Perlmutter today and for download. Um, Multi-GPUs supported today, and in our quarter four release, uh, we'll include Qiskit and uh, multi-node. <clears throat> so I'd like to stop there and take any questions, and hopefully we can uh, get this tutorial on.